presentation will be by James Woodruff, who will be um, telling us about the Pritzker School of Medicine Poetry Contest. Uh, Jim, it's a delight to have you here. Uh, so uh, thank you all for staying uh, to hear a little bit more about our Pritzker Poetry Contest uh, again this year. Um, we're, you're going to hear some poetry in a few minutes. I just wanted to say a few things about the Poetry Contest. And then I'm going to invite um, those individuals here in the room, uh, including our poets and some reciters, some hired, hired guns, to come up and actually recite our poetry. Um, so this is um, about our seventh year of doing the poetry contest. We've moved into a semi-annual format. And so uh, stay tuned in another two years. Uh, here at Bucksbaum, you'll be hearing some more poetry. Um, the mission of the poetry contest is to foster compassionate care for our patients and to enhance the therapeutic care, caregiver patient relationship throughout our medical center. Um, we were delighted by the level of interest across the medical center this year. We had over 120 poems uh, submitted, some really outstanding work. It was a very difficult selection process. We had poems from students, residents, faculty, and staff. Um, their words and spirit of empathy, generosity, and care were very much appreciated. I wanted to give thanks to a couple groups of people uh, one um, is uh, Ram, Ram, Dr. Rama Yeager of Re uh, University Retina, who has sponsored this contest since it started seven years ago. Um, I should point out that he also helped found the contest with uh, several of our medical students. Um, he could not be here today, so I'm speaking on his behalf. Uh, the second person uh, and a group of people I'd like to, to thank is Dr. Mark Siegler and the Bucksbaum Institute for um, inviting us here uh, to have the poetry recited. We um, really don't have otherwise a venue to demonstrate really the talents of our staff, um, our faculty, our residents, and our students. And this is a, a real wonderful opportunity. So thank you, uh, Mark, for inviting us. The six word poem category. Um, so in the six word uh, poem category, we had a first and a second place associated with some uh, monetary awards that you'll see um, in the, in the uh, program. Um, we have uh, one of our uh, Bucksbaum Institute Medical School scholars, Laura Glick, who's going to recite the poems. Uh, first place was a poem entitled, Untitled, um, <laughs> by Dr. Lucas uh, Kappas, MD, who is uh, a, res a resident in psychiatry. And second place is entitled, 14-year-old uh, male, um, by Athalia Pizer. Uh, a resident in our internal medicine residency program who could not be here today. Uh, so again, Laura Glick will be reciting those poems. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. So as Dr. Woodruff said, this, these are the six word poems. So the first one's called Entitled by Lucas Coppice, who's a psychiatry resident. And it's written about, uh, it's written about working with patients that have treatment resistant psychiatric illness. And he wrote, nothing left but an open heart. The second poem is, a, is called 14-Year-Old Male by Atalia Rachel Pizer. It goes, blood-soaked sneakers haunting me still. So we'll move back now to the open uh, poem category. Uh, first place um, in the contest this year in the open poem category is a poem entitled The Journey by Rilwan Babajide, one of the second year medical students at the medical school, and this poem will be recited by one of our Bucksbaum scholars, Jamila Picard. Woodruff, um, The Journey by Rilwan. Uh, the Journey by Rilwan Babajide. Another day in bed, an unceasing sea of white linoleum, a relentless blare of beeps and boops. This day is as yesterday was, and as all days are, since the diagnosis. Three floors down, a baby is born, Adam. But the miracle of life is a mirage to the dying. The journey, the chemo, the bills, the tears that took all strength with them as they fell. When surgery isn't enough, when radiation isn't enough, when drugs, technology, and experts aren't enough, I pray that love is. And if the journey must end, if life truly is but a mirage, then I pray that I may be an oasis and that the illusion brings peace to the wanderer. In the open uh, poem category, we had a tie for second place. And so we have two more poems uh, to recite. 
Uh, the first poem in second place uh, is entitled Empathy uh, by Miss Juanita ba Batts, who uh, is from uh, the Biological Sciences Division Public Safety Staff. Please come on up, Miss Batts. Um, sorry, before I start, I just want to share that, you know, since we had the new tra trauma center, it's been a lot going on and my team has been doing the best that we can to make sure that you guys are all protected at all means. So um, this poem is kind of personal because um, I see these things every day, especially with the people that I know living in the neighborhood. Okay, um, empathy. How can I stop these tears from falling or block out the cries that echoes in the lobby? Her son just got shot today. He was a good kid, I know him. This is my neighborhood. I wouldn't dare say it will be all right. Mind telling him, remain, my mind telling me remain professional. Body saying otherwise. How can I possibly say I understand? But truth is I do, but they wouldn't. I just lost a relative the other day. Managing to smile even through this somber time. Going on with business as usual. Smile, ID check, observe, make sure I protect. Cause I feel those tears falling. Sending prayers and encouraging words across the room. The, fa the family pacing, walk, waiting impatiently. A scream darts across the room. Bad news, he didn't make it. He didn't make it, tears are now falling from my own eyes. My empathy has suddenly turned into sympathy. Once again, smile, ID check. Observe, protect, this is my empathy. Thank you. It's a really wonderful poem uh, during this first year of our new trauma center. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the final poem is uh, the second uh, poem in the tie and tied for second place um, in the open poem category. Um, it is a poem entitled Within by Zaire Malik, um, MD, a resident in emergency medicine. Um, and this poem will be recited by Buxbaum scholar Taeyeon Kim. Within, by Zaire Malik. There's a moment after needle pierces skin when I think maybe this flash will be ambrosia or steel. I'll understand then how she remains sturdy and radiant and vulnerable and resilient in the face of pain and unknowing. But all I find is dark, visceral, red, unsettling proof of humanity. And as her eyes fill with tears, I swear I see flecks of gold. So thanks, uh, thank you so much to our scholars and also to Ms. Batts for coming uh, to present your, your poem. Um, so this, uh, this concludes uh, the presentation of our poems from the Pritzker Poetry Contest 2019. I'm going to turn things back over to Dr. Siegler and thank him once again for allowing us to participate in the Buxbaum Forum. Thank you, Jim. Thanks so much, Jim, and congratulations to the marvelous poets who wrote the poems and to the readers of the poems also. Um, I want to thank you all for attending the 8th Annual Buxbaum Institute Symposium. Throughout the afternoon, uh, we've heard a wonderful series of research presentations by Buxbaum Institute scholars, uh, all focused on improving the doctor-patient relationship. We've also heard keen insights from the Buxbaum Institute's advisory board, beginning with Holly's superb talk on, um, uh, on how to uh, reduce uh, problems in, in the health system and to improve resilience. Uh, and later, on the future US healthcare and the role the Buxbaum Institute can play in improving patient care. Um, I would like to thank all of our presenters and guest speakers. In particular, I want to thank the leadership of the Buxbaum Institute, uh, Angela Pace Moody, our center director. Where's Angela? Angela. <laughs> And, and Matthew Sorrentino, uh, our Associate Director of the Institute, Matt. 
um, as well as the Institute staff and our student interns. Um, I, I would also like to thank our hardworking Buxbaum scholars for all the effort they continue to put forth in their research and clinical activities. And I'd like to end by once again thanking Mrs. K. Buxbaum and the Buxbaum family for its uh, initial uh, endowment of the Buxbaum Institute and its continued support of the Institute. Without Kay's trust uh, and support, we would not be able to do as much as we have over the past eight years. Thank you all, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks.